be learning today is in the Siches Chedik Kabeis, the second Siches of Parshat Tzav. And it talks about the Korban Chavitim of the Kayan Godel. We'll start a Sikh inside. In Haitik Esedre, in this week's Sedre, Ved Tzelt Vegn Demdin from Chavite Kayan Godel. It talks about the Din of the Chavite Kayan Godel, which means as Yedin Tog, every day, and the post uses the word Tomid, which means every day, Darv the Kayan God will bring in a Korb Mincha. Every day he has to bring a certain Korb Mincha, and it has to be Mibesei. The Gemara says it has to come from his house, which means Mimameina. He has to pay for it. And it's Machsisa Babek and Machsisa Berev. Every day, half in the morning, half in the afternoon, which means, as the post says, the Korb Mincha has to be Asir Sa'e for Sailas, it has to be flower of the amount of a tenth of an apho. And that you divide in half. Half of it he brings in the morning, half of it he brings in the afternoon. And then I'll read inside the psukim a little bit, which will negate to the Sikhe. And the post continues, And the Kain HaMashiach, the anointed Kain, which means the Kain Godel, that will be anointed, Tachtov, instead of, in place of the one before him, be born of from his children, Yasei, so will also do it. Should also do it. Now, was every Kayan Godel has to bring this every day. Chok Elom, this is a rule, a law forever. Lashem to Hashem. Kolil Toktor. And this whole, this Kord Mincha is completely burnt on the Mizbeach. Which means usually by a Kord Mincha that a person brings, part of it is on the Mizbeach. You make a Kaymetz. The Kayan would take a handful of the flour. That would go on the Mizbeach. The rest would be eaten. But in this case, it says, Kolil Toktor. has to be completely burnt. And then the Posse continues, Bechol Minchas Kayan, Kolotiyah, Leisi Ochel. And any Mincha that the Kayan brings, any Kayan, any time he wants to bring a Mincha for whatever reason, Kolotiyah. It has to be burned completely, Leisi Ochel, and it's not eaten. These are the Psukim. So the Rabbi here, Vi is the Dine Mes Kayan Godel, Unlein Mino Achatachta. What's the Dine of the Kayan Godel died? And they didn't appoint another one instead of him yet. So it could be a few days before they appoint a new Kayan Godel. So what happens? So the din is that the time when the Kayan Godel is not there, you still have to bring this Korban. But this is the So there is an argument in the Tanoim, who has to pay for this? From whose money do you bring this Korban? The Minchas Kayan Godel, the Sminch of the Kayan Godel. Reb Shimon Zokt, as Mishal Tzibur. Reb Shimon says, it's paid, it has to be brought by, which means it's paid by the community, the communal fund. There was a fund that was used to buy the Korbanis Tzibur. All the Korbanis Tzibur, all the com community scored, not individual, not the Korban Yochid, Korbanis Tzibur, like the Korban Tommy that they brought every day in the morning and the afternoon, the Korban Musaf that they brought on Shabbos, and Rosh Chedesh, and Yontav, etc., etc. There was a fund that, that came from the Machtes HaShekel. Every year they would collect Machtes HaShekel from all the Eden, and that would be used for the Korban Tzibur. So if the Kayan Godel died, when he was alive, he had to pay for it himself. It was me base him, me from his own money. But he died, and there was no new Kayan Godel. When there's a new Kayan Godel already, then he brings from his money. But as long as there's no Kayan Godel, so Reb Shimon says it comes from the Tzibur. When Brink tells me, Mom and Tzibur, you bring it from the money of the Tzibur. When Reb Yudah, Reb Yudah says, I'm Shal Yershim. You bring it from the money of the heirs, the ones that inherited the Yershif from Kayan Godel, the heirs of the Kayan Godel, bringing them called Mincha, they bring the Kor Mincha. This means Mamana and Ander Kayan Godel till you appoint another Kayan Godel, then he brings it from his money. The Gemara brings a Braise, which is Mavaya Tamamach like this. The Gemara brings a Braise, which explains the reason for this argument that is based on the Psukim. The Behuda Darshan the Posik, the Behuda explains Darshan the Posik where it says, Bakayan. HaMashiach Tacht of Mibon of Yaseisei. And as I said before, let's read the words. The Kayan that's anointed, became Kayan Godel, Tacht of, in his place, Mibon of his children, Yaseisei should do it. So he says, the Hochamashman, this is the meaning of the Posik. HaKayan HaMashiach, the Kayan that's anointed, Keshemes, that died. In other words, the word HaKayan HaMashiach goes on the old Kayan Godel, not a new Kayan Godel. You would think simple, Pshat and Posik, the next Kayan Godel, from Mr. who will bring it. But he darshans the Kayan HaMashiach. And if he died, Tachtov Ech Ben of Yasei. So instead of him, one of his children will do it. When Hashim learned Tarus, so that's what the Buddha learns. So if it comes out from here, that who has to do it? 
the Yorshim. That's what the Posse, he dashes the Posse, like the Kayan HaMashiach, if he died, Tachtov Mibon of Yaseisei. Instead of him, his children do it, so it's Yorshim. When Reb Shimon learned that it's from Posse, Chuk HaSeilom. And Reb Shimon learns differently because the, another word of the Posse, as we read before, is it has to be Chuk HaSeilom, a rule forever. Now the word Eilam has another meaning. Eilam means the world. Mishal Eilam. That means that you bring the Kodm from the world, from the general public. Mishal Tzibur, Metrum Salishke. As the listen to the Lashon of Rasha, that you bring it from the Eilam, which means from the Tzibur. And that's the opinion, that's the source for the opinion of Rip Shimon, that you bring it from the Tzibur, not from the Yorshim. When Lashon HaMishnah Mishal Mihoi Sekarevo, from the way the Mishnah puts it, Asking from whom, who brought it? In other words, who paid for it? And also the way both Tanoim, the way they express themselves, is mashme comes out at the that this obligation that midaraisa you have to bring a korban as long as there's no other uh, no other king God appointed yet is nita pasunder under chiyuv na krovas achavit na the king God latzme is not like a separate obligation. Different than the king Godl himself. Because he could say that if he's alive, he brings it, then there's a new obligation, an obligation that has to be brought anyway later. The Shaili is who has to pay for it. But from the Loshan is Mashmah that it's not a separate, different Chiyuv that you have to bring the Korban. The says that the Torah Machadish given no Chachiv na Krovas Chavitin, the Meskin Godl. The Torah gave a new obligation, another obligation. If the king Godl is not alive, so the, the, the scorpion has to be brought anyway, but there's a new obligation. And the question is, who has it? That's not the pshat. That's mashme from the lotion of the Gemara and the lotion of these Tutanoim. But it's a hemshech, when in themselves, Musug Achiv Akrovi, with the king Godl, it's a continuation of his obligation. The obligation of the king Godl to bring it continues when he passes away. The Shaila is who pays for it, but it's an, a continuation of the carbon that the King Godel is obligated to bring. Based on that, we could say that the argument how you darshan the psukim is verbunden mit aplukte in techna carbon from Chavite King Godel. It's not only the way they darshan the psukim, there's a reason why each one darshans the posik each way, the way he does, because there's a logic behind it, his opinion. So you could say that Rebbe says, that since this is a continuation, not a new heel, but a continuation of the obligation of the Kehen Godel, so we could say that let's analyze what is the obligation of the Kehen Godel himself. Why he's alive? When the Kehen Godel in his market, when he himself brings it. So when we analyze what is the meaning, what is the teichen, together we could say, of the obligation of the Kehen Godel himself, based on that, how we learn his obligation will come out what happens if he is not alive? Who has to bring it? Because that's a continuation of his obligation. And that's where the two opinions come. And that's why they dash in the psukim the way they do. And what's the pshat? When they gave them together for Chavite and Godel, concerning the gather, the classification or I want, you know, which words we can use for the gather, of this mitzvah, of this obligation of Chavite and Godel, even though he has to pay for it. When does hey Zainer Akord Chavite Ken Godel and the name of it it's called always Chavite Ken Godel. Chavite is the name of the Korban of the Ken Godel. So it seems like it's an obligation on him, and he has to pay for it. Kem and Kled, but still we could analyze it and think. See the Zainer and Gantz together from Akord Miyochid. Is it completely a Korban Yochid? Which means Korban Yochid means a Korban that is the obligation of an individual. So you can learn here too the Ken Godel as an individual. Because of his position, who he is, he has an obligation as his own korban to bring the korban of Chavite Ken Godel. Or the design of Ken Korban Tzibur. Or you could say, no, it's similar like a korban Tzibur. It's like a korban of the community. Why would we think it's a korban of the community if it's his own obligation? So they have explains. Yes, Shleimer, we could say that it depends on the reason why he has to bring this korban. And there are different reasons. And according to one reason, it would seem like it's his private korban, korban yochid. And according to the other reason, it would seem like it's like a korban tzibur. It's a korban for the community, even though he has to bring it himself and he pays for it, but it's still a korban for the tzibur. What's the reasons? The chinuch is masbid, the chinuch explains. And the chinuch, when he brings the mitzvahs, he always brings the sharosha mitzvah, like the reasons behind the mitzvah. 
So he explains Mishrosha Mitzvah, the reason the roots of the mitzvah, of this mitzvah, the King Godel have to bring this carbon. So he says, Lefisha King Godel, Ashliar Ben Yisrael, Lavi and Shabashmaim, since the King Godel is the agent, the messenger between the Eden and the Eibishter, claim a meaning. He's the one that davens to him to the Ebishte for the Eden. By date filets of a Maisa Corbonis and his Capramim and through his davening, his filets and his Corbonis, the Eden get a Kapore, the Tzibur, the community, all the Eden get a Kapore, forgiveness. But Loch and Royal, Ishko Zesa, therefore it fits for such a person, Lies Le Korb Mayucha Tomit, that he should always have a special Korb, Kemate Mide at Tzibur, he says, like the Korb Tomit of the Tzibur. There are set korbanas that the tzibur has to bring. So his korban, because he's a tzibur person, he davens for the tzibur and he's a tzibur, he's a representative of the tzibur, he has to bring a korban like the tmiti tzibur. And that will help him and help them. According to this explanation comes out, that this korban, which is tomid, which is also constant, which is similar to the korban tomid, which is definitely a korban of the tzibur, the korban tomid that he brought every day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. But it's for the tzibur, it's a korban of the whole community. And his is also constant tomid. So it would come out that this minchas chavitin, which is tomid, from Ken Godel, is bishvil kaporas at tzibur. It's to bring the kapora for the tzibur. Al deref it midi at tzibur. Just like the korban tomid of the tzibur is to bring a kapora for the tzibur, according to the chinuch's explanation, his korban is the same. Especially that physically they bring this korban of the Chavite Ken Godel right after the korban Tomit. So it seems like it's a continuation. It's also a korban from the Tzibur. So according to this, it's a korban Tzibur. Even though it's his personal korban, but it's like a korban Tzibur. But it seems and it's understood from other people, from other Meforshi. At the korban is forbidden. Blaze mitn king god latzme al tzioche. That this korban is connected only to the king god himself as an individual. He says, "Fashtanik from kama be kama from the time it was the meforshim time and mitzvahs and masber." As we understand for many reasons that the meforshim that explain the reasons for mitzvahs the way they explain it. Ledugma, for instance, he says, "Dar barbanel bring kama be kama." Rav Barbanel brings many reasons. Umehem and amongst them he gives one reason. He says, "Kedei lahachnis leif." That when the King Godel goes into the place of Migdash and to do the Aveda, he should go in with Hanover, with humility, and signs of poverty. Like a poor man standing in front of the master of the whole world. So the King Godel because he has to do some things to bring a korban to show his humility. And bringing a korban mincha shows that you're poor. Because it says that the difference between a korb mincha and the korb of an animal, that a person who could afford to bring an animal. Who would bring a korb mincha, just a korb of flour, a poor man? So we made, so the Torah said that the, the king God should bring every day a korb of flour to bring humility into him. Another reason he says, Shirotza Hashem, Hashem wanted, Shibachol Yeim, you crave the fun of korb yochid, the korb tzibur. Every day, the Abish to want should bring for him an individual korb yochid and the korb tzibur. So they work about the korb tomit, and the reason why he brings his korban, because they should once every day there should be a korban miyochid also. Derach klal, but derach prat should be for the klal, for the, for the community and for the individual. Now, according to these reasons, it seems that it's completely korban miyochid. That's his own korban for his own purpose. So, so now we have two opinions, two svaris. One reason seems to say that it's a korban tzibur, and one seems to be saying it's a korban miyochid. So based on that, we could say Adi Plukta now. So now we could say that the argument that we said before, then King Godel Shemes, that when King Godel died and they didn't appoint another one yet, we shall the craven the argument who has to pay for, who has to bring it, is totally in the Tzvei Suge time manal. It depends on the two reasons. In other words, it based on what we assume the Korpm itself is by the person who the King Godel was alive. Is it a korb miyochet or a korb tzibur? The result will be whether the tzibur pays for the time when he's not here and he died, or his relatives, his yorshim pay. Amen. Them to not the korb from kegodel is a derech for a korb tzibur. If we assume that the korb of this ken godel is a korb tzibur, he does it on behalf of the tzibur. The afuish coming has to come out. I must be talking ken godel to bring in the korb when there's no ken godel to bring the korb. That's why he brought it from the tzibur. That's why he brought it has to be brought from the money of the tzibur. It's all based on what we said before, that what you bring after he died is a continuation of his korban. 
So since his korban is for the tzibur, so he used to bring it on behalf of the tzibur. Now that he's not alive, that same korban is brought by the tzibur because when he brought it, it was also on behalf of the tzibur. But hey, we told them that the korban can God lot need can shaykh as tzibur. If we're going to accept that the can this korban to can God has nothing to do with the tzibur with the community, nor if rabbanu mitn can God lot shaykh is connected to can God as an as who he is as an individual. That's demolished. So then, in favor of Meis can God, if the can God died. The korban gebracht from the Yoshim has to be brought by his heirs because it's a continuation of him and his heirs are a hemshech, a continuation of him. A pia now, based on what we said till now, as the chitas Reb Yehuda that the korban gebracht from the Yoshim, the father the ke the korban is forbidden to gain God lots. But based on what we just said, that according to Reb Yehuda, that the korban, if he's not alive, the kor and there's no new king God, the korban has to be brought by his heirs. It, the reason for it is because the korban originally is his personal korban. That when understanding the lashon Rambam with the Radoch Anal, we will be able to understand that we'll answer a question in the expression of the Rambam in this halacha that talks about this deep. The Rambam passed and Reb explained. The Rambam says, "Meske and God will be shachris that the king God will die in the morning." And after he was makriv, half because we said before there was supposed to be flour and isor and oifo, and half would be in the morning, half in the afternoon. He brought the morning korban and he died before he brought the second one. And they didn't appoint another kohen. So the Rambam says, yorshim. the Yorshim bring it and they bring a, a Yisorin Sholem, but they bring a complete Yisorin. They don't bring just a half, but they bring a complete Yisorin. And this is the Yorshim. So this fits according to Rabbi Yehuda. He passed him like Rabbi Yehuda. But the Rambam adds, why did, and what's the purpose of their bringing the korban? Avur kaporosai. For the kapora for the kohen god. According to the not understand. What does the Rambam mean by saying that now the second half a day, the Yorshim bring it, like the Buddha said? But the Rambam adds, because of his kapara, what does he mean with that? Where does the Rambam take it from? That this is because of the kapara for the king God. Or the beer in them, the beer is like the Rambam, based on what we said before. The meat will the Rambam on that Nathan Tam. By doing this, Rama wants to give the reason for what is the Dina Mavina Yorshim. He wants to tell us the reason why is it that the Yorshim bring it. And how does it prove by saying Avur Kaprosa is the reason why the Yorshim bring it? So the Rebbe first brings in another point, and together we will see what the Rambam is trying to tell us. The Inyan is that there's something else. The Chura for them was the Rebbe Huda is Mishana for Loshan Aposik. By Rebbe Huda changing, changing the Loshan of the Posik, the Posik says who brings it. Be born of Yasa, he say. The way the Buddha says, because the Posik says, Akeina Mashiach Tachtov Mi Bonov. So, in the Posik, Mi Bonov Yasa, he say. So, the Posik, this is a Buddha source that Yorshim have to bring it, but the Posik uses the lotion, Mi Bonov, from his sons or his children. Really, it means sons. Unzokt, the Ramam changed and he says, Yorshim, his heirs. Now, by doing that, the Ramon is trying to tell us obviously something. What's the difference between heirs and bonov? Bonov are sons. The Ramon is trying to tell us it's not only the sons. It's fashtane we understand from the Ramon changing it to Yorshim. Not only males if he has sons. And we'll skip the parentheses for a second and then we'll go back to it. Nor I feel that the King God will hot in Kabon Mishorim. With Masha from the Ramon, but even the Ramon is trying to tell us even the King God doesn't have sons, doesn't have males. His Yorshim, his heirs, are daughters. So they have to bring the Meschaviti. That's what Ramos trying to obviously, because otherwise he would say the lotion of the Posse. Why wouldn't he stick to the original lotion? Trying to teach us a din that it's even if it's daughters. So we have to understand. What is, and he's saying his Pshat in Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Where does Rabbi Yehuda get this Chidush as Eir Di Yorshim? And even these heirs, meaning stam, any heir, eich bonus, even daughters, daven bringing them korb, have them in the korb, or nit norkim a furish beposik bonov, not like it says in the Torah bonov. Now, in the parentheses that we skipped, the Rebbe says like this: If it would be only sons, we'd even understand there wouldn't be such a kasha. Why? Because sons bechazayne begeder to bring it amiches chavitin. The sons who are kayanim themselves, they are in the category beetsim of this korb. Why are the bats in this court? So he says like this. boy is certainly a bane from the bonim is royal malus became if one of his children is fit 
to take his place. But Mele is a shame is Bekeach Uvech Petr Ken Godel. So already now he's potentially a Ken Godel. Really later he'll become a Ken Godel. So certainly he has a connection. We understand why he has to bring it because he has a connection to being a Ken Godel. Now he's potential and eventually become. But I feel a bond of Stam Vachan Kenim. But even Stam sons, which are Kenim, not Ken Gaim, and will stay that way. They have no connection to Ken Godel. Still, they have a connection to the discord. Why? Because as we said before, every Kayan, when he becomes, like when he's inaugurated to become a Kayan, which means not he's always a Kayan, but to become a person doing the Aveda. So before he starts doing the, the first Korban he has to bring is the same Korban as a Kayan Godel. The difference is he brings it once in his lifetime. When he's inaugurated and when he's put into the Aveda, Kayan Godel brings it every day. But still, we see that every Kayan has a connection to this Korban. So at least we can understand why the Yorshim, the sons, would bring this Korban of the father, even though they're not Kayanim Dalim, but they have other potential, or even not, they have a connection. But if we're saying that it means even daughters, they have no connection to this Korban. So why would they bring it? And where does their beauty get this that they also have to bring? And the Rambam learns that it goes on daughters too. That's why he changed from the word Bon of the Yorshim. That's why the Rambam adds the words that the reason they bring the Korban the Yorshim is because Avur Kaparose for his Kapore. He answered the Raman, the Korban is neat fun un al the Yorshim tzadatsme. That the Korban that these Yorshim bring is not for themselves. Then we'd have a problem. Themselves, the daughters, what do they have to do with this Korban? Nor Avur Kaparose. It's in order to bring a Kapore for the, the father or the, 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 the marriage, the one that they're Yashin from, the Kayan Godel. Those for the Yorshim bringing them Korban is to be the Kapore from the marriage. The reason the Yorshim bring the Korban is for the Kapore, for the forgiveness of Averis, of the Merish, of the King Godel that is making them inherit. Because this Korban, Chavite King Godel, is a Kapore for the King Godel. So since it's a Kapore for the King Godel, is this Nita Geder from Zayar Korban? So since what they're doing now after he died, what they're doing is a Hemshuk to. His obligation, as we said in the beginning, it's all one obligation. And by him, it's for his kapora. So what they have to bring is not for themselves. It would be for themselves. So daughters, what connection do they have to being to the korban to Ken Godel? But it's not their korban. It says, need I gather from their korban, not their korban. Not a korban for the marriage. It's a korban of the one that's making them of the Ken Godel. So they bring in this. They bring in as Yorshin them Korban Shalavim. They bring, because they're Yorshin, they bring their father's Korban. This is a Hemshech to their father's Korban. So now that we said that this is the way we say Pshat in the Behuda, that this is because the Korban is a Korban Yochid, so it's the father's Korban. If it's the father's Korban, and this Korban continues, so the Yorshim have to bring it. I, they're not Shaykhs to it, but they're not bringing it because of themselves. In other words, they're paying for it because of the father. And that's what the Rambam does by adding the word Avor Kaparosi. The way we explained before, till now, what is this Korban Chavite Ken Godel? As is Anyan and Geder from Ken Korban Tzibur. On one hand, it's like a Korban Tzibur, we said. That's one opinion and one way to look at it. On the other hand, we could say it's an individual Korban of him as a Korban Yochit, as his own Korban. But Eich, when the Fashtanik, the Pirish Rasha, will understand what Rasha says, they from Posik, and this Posik, the Kayan, the Mashiach, the Mabon of Yase, so the Posik of the Kayan that's anointed. In his place, from his children, should do it. And the Posik finishes off, call little doctor that that Korban has to be burned completely. Rasha says something which is not so clear. And by what we said before, we'll understand that Rasha. Rasha is mighty diverter, Mashiach, Tachtem, and Rasha quotes from the Posik, as Rasha always does. He quotes a few words of the Posik and explains it. So Rasha quotes from the Posik, Hamashiach, Tachtem, and The Posik says that the Kayan, Hamashiach, that's anointed, that's the Kayan God, Tachtem, Mibonov, instead of him, from his children. When he's my father, and he explains these words, he adds, it means Hamashiach Mebon of Tachtov, the anointed one, from his children instead of him. That's one thing Rashi says. The Noch is a mighty diverted, and then Rashi quotes in a separate piece the words that it says in the post, Kolil Tachtov, that is burned completely. When he's my father, and explains like this, what does that mean, burned completely? Einik Metzes Lies Shereh on the Cholomim. We know by a regular korb mincha that's made of flour, as I said before, the kayan would take a handful of the flour, put that on a mizbeach. The rest would be eaten. 
Here it says, call it doctor. So Rasha says, what does it mean? Einik says, you don't take off a kaimetz, a handful. Li And in order, the rest, and the rest will be eaten. Elokul il talk, call it. It's burn complete. So these are the two pieces of Rasha. Is in Ershim Dibur nit fashtan, if you mafersh and animadaik. So mafershim ask on the first piece of Rasha. When Rasha change says that the words Hamashiach Takta Rabon, it means Hamashiach Rabon of Takta. So the Mafershim, Vosvil Rasha mi Perushe, what does Rasha want with his commentary? All Rasha does, he changes the words of the Posit, the order of the Posit. What's he trying to tell us? What changes or what? Or Understanding we get in the understanding of the puzzle. What is Rashi doing here? That's in the first piece. Eichen zveiten dibur The second piece that we said is also not understood. Vosid the Rashi mechadish. What's Rashi telling us something that we wouldn't know ourselves? Anything that we know ourselves, Rashi doesn't have to tell us. Rashi telling us something that we might not know. So what's he telling us? Pashtes from kolot talk. The simple meaning of the words kolil doctor hot nor ein optaich has only one meaning, which is as mis does in ganzem aktiv. You call it complete, call him is complete to be makter. It's black gone and there's nothing left to eat. So, why does Rasha have to explain it? What it means is you don't take off a kemetz and the rest you eat, but you burn the whole thing. That's what the words mean on its own without Rasha telling us. So, why is he telling us? Nochmer, you go to the question further. Rasha earlier already said, the Mloshin, he says in a different posik, concerning a different deen, he says, when it says, he says like this, any element has a certain deen. But we think that this only applies to a mincha of a Yisrael, she nikmet says that you take off a kemetz. But minchas kein, she kolil, but the minchas kein, which is kolil, which means it's completely burned, maybe the din is different. So Rasha uses the word kolil, meaning it's completely burned. And he, this is written in Rasha before this posseg we're learning today. When it's the Bagnit Mesi beer, he says the word kolil, and he doesn't add what it means. Hey, so that means I'm a fashtay bepashta, that simply we understand what's kolil made. What the word kolim is, Rasha doesn't have to explain it. I'm if I brand them, guns the carbon, the burned or carbon. I was there for Rasha do, if I was like with the guns I reaches. So why here, which is later, said if before, if he would do the opposite, we could understand. First he has to explain it. If he mentioned it the second time, he doesn't explain it. But here's the opposite. The first time he mentions the word kolil, doesn't explain it. He assumes that everyone knows what it means. Now, which is later, he ex why does he have to explain it? And so with length. That what does Kolil Tokter mean? That you don't take off a Kemetz. The leftovers is eaten. Elokula Kolil, complete Kolil. So first he has a Kashi B'chal, why does he have to explain it? And here we have a Raya that it's not does need explanation. Because before he said it without explaining. So why does he explain it here? Bite it, then let's go further. If a Postik Shalach, and the next Postik, where the Postik says, That any Mincha of a Kayan has to be Kolil, and you can't eat it. Is Rasha Mafarish of word kol? Rasha explains again what the word kol means, but he says a different word. Kula shavu lagaveya. All of it is equal, the same to Hashem. So it seems like he's explaining what the word kol means. Is tamua biyes, and now it's very hard to understand. Free and nuts Rasha. There are three places here. First Rasha, free and nuts Rasha the word kol on keshum pirush. First Rasha uses himself the word kol without any explanation. The noch is a mavayer that's main endik metzes, and then. He explains that what does it mean? You don't take off a kemetz and the rest is eaten. That's the second one. And after that, and after that, the third time, the word kol. Then he again explains the word kol and in different words. He explains the word kolil by saying that it's all equal, all the same to the gaveya to Hashem, which means to the mizbeach. What is the pshat in this Rashi? The shleim of the beer because the Rebbe said the pshat and all this. The shyly impossible Rashi Bavon. The question the pshat Rashi is trying to answer. As, as we said, the cloud we know the cloud Rasha does not write anything on a POSIC unless there's something not understood or a mistake you might make or you don't understand it. Something is clear, Rasha doesn't have to say. So here, obviously, when Rasha explains in our POSIC what it means, call it talk term, must be because there's something not understood. So he says, like, the Shaila that's not understood here is the Shine Aloshin in the Tzoy Psukim, the change of the wording of the two Psukim. In the Mershon POSIC, the first POSIC where it talks about the Korban Mincha, this Korban of the Kayan Godel, state the Loshna Posik is Kolil Toktor. Toktor means to be burned. Complete has to be burned, but it says the word Toktor. In Svetna Posik, where it's Retz the Kol Mincha Skein, the next Posik, where it talks about any Korban Mincha of any Kayan, state Kolil Tiyeh. 
It shall be kolil. What's the difference? Why first by the king he says call it doctor and here says call it keep. From the machine in the psukim is Rashi medayik. From the change of these two psukim, Rashi is medayik. And as I know, two bezund in yonim and nafan in kolil. These are two types of kolil. Even though it says the word kolil, but they're not the same type of kolil. And thus is mutkish mavoyir and darichas lashon Rashi. And that is clear and explained and stressed in the arichas the way Rashi writes his lashon. And I'm going to say before we learn inside, I'm just going to say what it is. There's two ways of having kolil, of burning. You have the mincha, the flour, and you burn the whole thing. By a regular person, a Yisrael, you take off a kaimetz and burn that, and the rest is not burned, it's eaten. And by then, by a kayan, it's kolil, completely burned. But there's two ways it's possible to be. One way is by, that you take the whole flour, you put on the flour, at the card mincha, you take the whole thing without doing a kaimetz. Without taking a handful, you take the whole thing. By a Yisrael, you take off a kaimetz and only burn the kaimetz. Here, you take the whole thing and burn it. There's another way that you do take off a kaimetz. You take off a handful. But usually, you take off a handful and you burn it, and the rest is not burned. And it could be called it that after you take off the handful and you burn it, you burn the rest also. Everything is burned. But you do take off a kaimetz. And that's going to be the difference in these two places. Call it, talk to it, it's Farish. By the word call it, talk to it, it says by the Korban to the king, God of Rasha says, Enik metzes, liyash yireo necholim, alakula kolim. You don't take off a kaimetz in order to eat the rest. But you burn the whole thing. Now normally, the way it seems to be learning the words, Rasha means you don't take off a kaimetz. And the rest you eat. You burn the whole thing. But Rasha, the Rebbe says, that's not the Pshat ne Rasha. But there are richas aloshen, by being, writing it so roundabout, so to speak, that he says, you don't take off the kaimitz in order to eat the rest. Mach drash the klor kavanosa rasha makes it very clear what he means. As kolil doctor meant need to shale as the minya from pizza. Kolil doctor does not mean that you don't do the kaimitz. To meet the darzain, you have to take off the kaimitz. He's over as zak mitzvah was ancient around the cholin. It's a kmitzah, not like a regular case. Where you do the kmitzah and the rest is eaten. Here it's a kmitzah, not in a way that the rest is ancient around the cholin. The leftovers is not eaten either. We burn them in the Mizbech also. That means, you burn the Kaimitz itself and you burn the leftovers itself. And the Rebbe brings in the order that this is actually the opinion of Rav Shimon in the Gemara Menachas. By, by, by regular Kabbalists. But here Asher learns that by the Kengodl, you take off a Kaimitz and you burn that and you burn the rest also. When those are the Peters from Kolol Tokta, that's what Asher learns. Kolol Tokta means... As outside the came inside the shrine, the nitra from the the kaimitz and the leftovers are burned on the mizbeach. You do take off a kaimitz and you burn that on the and the and the leftovers. That sveiter kolil tia was stayed by kol michaskein the second time when it says kolil tia, which is talking by a, a korban mincha regular of a of a kain, not the korban of the king godel. Is pirusha der rasha says he comes and touches what it means kula shove legaveya. It's all the same to the korban. Is there mincha? Is he talking of an undertale? Here you don't separate it, divide it. If a kaimitz and a shrine, you have two things, a kaimitz and a shrine, and they're both burned. In this case, no, no, it's completely brought on the mizbeach equally. There is no kmitza bilchal, there's no handful taken off. Kolil tia, it shall be tia. And the word tia means as he blight kolil bav yosef. It's burned as is. Tia in the Gemara Dashnas and other places means as is. As is, you take the whole flower. No kaimitz and you burn them as bad. And that answers all the shilas. The word kolil itself, Rasha, the first time he brings it, doesn't have to, we know kolil means he burned the whole kolil. Then we ask the kasha, how come when it comes to the king God, let's just call it, talk to Rasha, explains what it means. not explaining what that, that you have to burn the whole thing. It's trying to tell us that here, the kolil means that you take off a kaimitz, but you don't eat the rest. You do take off a kaimitz and you burn it and the rest is also burned. And then Rasha, when it comes to regular king, Rasha touches again, the word color. So we asked, why is he touching it again? He's not touching it again. He's telling us the new, the dean over there is different. And he says, it's all shovel agaveya. It's all the same for the that you don't take off a kemitz either. So this is the difference. We, so based on what we said before, we are the same shot in Russia. But the question is, my time of Nemchilitz, Vishim Minchas Ken Godel, Minchas Ken Stam. What is talking the reason why there's a difference between the Mincha de Ken Godel and the Mincha of a regular Ken? Based on what we said in the beginning of the Sikha, close to the beginning of the Sikha, we'll understand. 
רש"י נמתום בפשוטו של מקרא, דחוויתי כן גודל ועסקום התומת בכל ים, זה עניינית מנגדת ונעקור מודי כן גודל ברנק על סיוכית. רש"י learns in פשוטו של מקרא, not going to the Gemara, I think, but in the way it seems in פושט פשט in the פוסק. So רש"י accepts that דחוויתי כן גודל, since they came every day, they're not a קורבן that the קיין גודל brings as an individual. It's not a קורבן יוכית. Which would then mean, it's in זלב מסוג ויה מנחס קיין סתם, that it's in the same category as a קורבן מנחה that a קיין brings, and every time a קיין brings a קורבן מנחה, it's a קיין, a קורבן יוכית of his own. So this would be the same. נורמית אי סופר, אדו ספר בוד מתכונה גדלה, but this is not just like a regular קיין, it's like since he's a קיין גודל, he brings that קורבן יוכית every day. So Rash accepts that that's not the Pshat. Because it's a Korban Tomid, you bring it every day, but does it a Korban was a brain al shliach from Klal Yisro. It's a Korban that he brings as a messenger of all the Eden. Al derech with a Korban Tomid, just like the regular Korban Tomid that you bring every day, is a Korban Tzibur. So this is similar to the Kain Korban Tzibur, the Korban Tzibur. Now if you learn that Rashi accepts that, Al Pizay is moving for what Rashi learned as Chavite Kain Godel Darf Noven Kmitzah. Now we understand why Rashi learns, as we said before, that the Chavite Kain Godel had to have Kmitzah. Had to have the handful, even though you burned the rest also, but it had to have a kmitze separately, and then you had the rest. Why? See, if this would be a regular din of a minchas kayan, elamai is a kayan godl. By a kayan, we said, there's no kmitze. You burned the whole thing. But now that we're saying it's not a mincha like a regular, like a kayan, because he's a kayan. Nor al der of a mincha sibur. It's similar to a mincha of the korban, of the whole community. If it's a korban from the community, it's not a korban, it's a korban, then it has to have kmitzah. Any korban mincha that's brought on the mizbeach, you do kmitzah, so you have to do kmitzah here also. Because it's not a korban of a korban. The korban brings it, the korban godl brings it, but the korban is a korban tzibur. But nevertheless, you know, the baal does the pale, where the mincha gebracht durch the korban godl, but after all, it's brought by the korban godl. So to a certain degree, it's like his korban, but as the farecha is damas, we shtavus minchas kayan. So it has also a similarity to a mincha of a regular a mincha of a kayan. That what? As ein shirei on the chol, you don't eat the rest. So that's why you do both. You do kmitze because it's a korban sibur. But since there is still a little connection to being his own korban, so he's a kayan, and by a korban of a kayan, you don't eat the leftovers. So you don't eat the leftovers either. So you have to burn. From high time, ezeich rashi magdim bipirusha b'tchilos akosuv. Now we understand. By Rashi in the beginning of the Posik, where it says, the Kayan that's anointed, instead of him from his children. So what does Rashi do? And he's Mishana, he changes these words, Mefarish, and he changes the order, and he says what it really means is Hamashiach Mabonov Tahtav, the anointed one from his children instead of him. Why does Rashi do that? We'll understand. The meat will Rashi say in Pshuta Shemikra the Pirish for the Buddha. By doing this, Rashi wants to in Pshutosh Mikro, the Shailel, a certain Pshat, Shailel means he wants to show that it's not the Pshat in Rabbi Not a certain Pshat that you might learn. So Rasha, based on what we said before, Rasha wants to tell her. What is it? The Fipirish Rabbi Yudah Kumdu is according to Rabbi Yudah. It comes out, Adervort Mi Bonov, when it says in the Posik, Akein HaMashiach Tachtov Mi Bonov, Umemele Ech Devort Tachtov, Mi Bonov, in the Posik, HaShiach Tachtov Mi Bonov, is not kosher to word for Mashiach, nor to Yaseh. It's not connected to the word Mashiach, but it's the word Yase. Because according to Rabbi Yudah, as we said in the beginning of the Sikha, Rabbi Yudah holds it, the Yoshim bring it, and the Gemara explains that why, because he darshans the Posik, Hakeyan HaMashiach Tachti, he says, means Hakeyan HaMashiach, separately. Hakeyan HaMashiach. If he died, Tachtov Mebon of Yase, he says. So the one that's after him, his children, should bring it. So it comes out that we separate the word Kena Mashiach from the word Tachta Mebonov. The word Tachta Mebonov goes on the end of the post. Yase, he said. When the Pirish and Posik is Kanal, the Pirish is like Kanal, like we said in the beginning. Hakeyana Mashiach, that's separate words. It, the Kayan Godel, Eber is a mess. You stop there and you say, by him, if he dies, is Tachta Mebonov Yase, the one after him, from his children brings it. Tachta Mebonov bring in the Korb Mincha Tachtov. So the children have to be coming. That's how it seems to learn in Rabbi Yehuda. So a person who learns Posik might think that's a shot in the Posik, that you separate between the two. Okay, now Mashiach, that's one thing. Now, 
the Rebbe is going to How could we even think that's the pshat? Does that fit the pshut shel mikra? Rogma pshut shel mikra. Rashi is trying to say you might make a mistake and think that's the pshat in pshut shel mikra. Af opia der pirish is lechura vayt from pashtas akosiv. It's far from the pshat to say that a kena mashiach means if he died. That's pretty far from the simple pshat. What does it say he died? Poshet pshat and poshet a kena mashiach tachtav mebonov. That's I say. Poshet taisha the words of the kena mashiach, the one that's instead of him from his children. Why would we even think that maybe it? Pshat, it means Hakeyin Mashiach. If he died, Tachtem Rebbeinu brings it. So Rebbe says no. What Rebbe given an orts zog still was a possibility to say at their meet what the posik zog them say them. Since the posik writes the order, Ashtot mi bonav Tachtem instead of writing the word mi bonav Tachtem, that would make more sense. If we try, just the posik is just trying to tell us that the next king God has to bring it. It should have said mi bonav Tachtem that from his children who are after him they should bring it. Nevertheless, Rasha writes Tachtov. The Posik writes a mimi Tachtov Mibonov. Different than it should have written. So we think is the Posik Meramis. So the Posik is indicated. About it. The simple Pshat is that a Kayan Mashiach, that is an ex Kayan Godel, has to bring it. That's Posh Pshat. But since the Tayyid changes a Losha, which should have been, it should have said Mibonov Tachtov. So his Meramis could be the Tayyidist in Pshat. He's trying to hint, no Chadin, a new Din. Besides the Din that every Kayan Godel has to bring it. Nice of a Mepirish Apostrophe from Posig, in addition to the simple Pshat, at the Nochkum and the Kekena Mashiach, by bringing Chavita Ken Godel, the next Ken Godel has to also bring the Skorpion. So maybe the Torah, by using the words this way, hints to us a new Din as Ken Godel, Shemez, bring a bond of Zayn Korp, Vitasar Yudin, to teach us that the Ken Godel died, so his children bring it. That's why the Posig changed that lotion, and that could be, have a place even in the Pshut Shemika. So a person might think that's the Pshat. Is Rasha Shaila than Peter Shem Shutu Shlomik? Rasha says, no, that, that shot we can't say in shot. Who learned and he learns, no. As he is Kiilu, as Volt Melchat Hilak is done in the Posse Kamashiach, Bono Mutach. Whole thing you might think so, because it should have said, Hamashiach, me bon of Tachtov, instead of Hashiach Tachtov, me bon of. So Rasha says, that's what the Posse means. It's Mamish the same way as if it would say, Hashiach, Mano Tachtov. I mean, it's not Mavsik, Swiss Mashiach, me bon of. We don't make Amkech, Hamashiach, and we stop. And the word bonav continues. The Kayah HaMashiach was his Mibonav Tachta, the Kayah Godel, that were not Mavsig, and between Mashiach and Bonav. And what do we say? It goes together. The Kayah HaMashiach was his Mibonav Tachta, the Kayah HaMashiach was his from his children. But if you say that, what is the Posik telling us? That the Kayah HaMashiach that is from his children. The Posek is telling us that the Kayan HaMashiach, the Kayan Godel from his children, has to bring it. So what does that tell us? Obernit born of Stam, but not regular children. Rashi, as we said before, holds that this is a korban, like a korban tzibur. It's a kapor of a Klal Yisrael. And the Kayan Godel brings the Al-Shliach from Klal Yisrael. Kayan Godel brings as a messenger from Klal Yisrael. Obermeila hot nit kenort as Kayan Godel shemes, so it makes no sense that the Kayan Godel died. It's born of the It makes no sense the children should bring it. They're not Kayan Godelin. And the Korban is a Korban. The Kayan Godel brought it as a Shlich from Kal Yisrael. But they're not Shlich from Kal Yisrael. They're not Shlich from Kal Yisrael. So bring in the Korban. So it makes a sense they should bring the Korban. So that's why Rasha says that the word. So when now when we have Kayan Mashiach, Mi Bon of Tachtov, goes together. So, and you can't say that any Belial should bring it. So, who should bring it? So, this is according to the opinion of Reb, that who has to bring it? So, the Yorshim have to bring it. No, not the Yorshim have to bring it. Because it's the, he is a, it's a Korban Sibur. So, who has to bring it? Not the children. So, Rasha is trying to tell us that, that according to Pshutra Shal Mikro, this is not part of the Drash. But the Posik is telling us that in the King God, the next King God has to bring it as a Posh Shat, as if it would say in Posik, Kayan Hamashiach, Mibon of Tachtov. I'm bringing it. But it's not that, and because Rasha, as we said before, holds it's a Korban Sibur. And if he holds it's a Korban Sibur, so you can't say that Stam, the next son, should bring it if he's not a King God. Okay. So we understand why Rasha. Changes the word and says, I said that when it says, I'm a sheikh, I'm a sheikh, tachtov, me bon of you might think you separate between the two and learn out the deen of Rabbi Yehuda, that Rabbi Yehuda says that it comes from the Yarshim. Rasha wants to say it doesn't come from the Yarshim. 
Why? Because since it says Hamashiach Mabon of Tachtov, it's Kiilu, it says, means that who brings it? The next game, Godel. That's what the Pesach is saying. But not that telling us that the Yorshim, his Yorshim, have to bring it. Because since it's a din in the king Godel, Al Tzibur, so not the Yorshim. As we said before, the Yorshim only bring it if it's a din akor Yochid. If it's his Korban, so now they are instead of him. But if you say that it's a Korban Tzibur, so then it's not that the children will bring it. Why would the Yorshim bring it? And Rasha wants to tell us that that's the Pshat, not, not the way, not that the Yorshim bring it. Apia now, based on what we said before, at the Chilitz vision of Yudin Reb Shimon is a plucked in them, gathered from Mechaz, based on what we said before, that home Machleik is the Huda Reb Shimon, whether the children bring it or the Tzibur brings it, is not Machleik is Legabe, the Kayin Godel died. They're all based on what is the Dean of the Korban when the Kayin Godel himself brings it. Eich when the Kayin Godel bring, 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 when the Kayin Godel himself brings, Yash Lavai, Noch Achidlik, and the Rakhrab Sachavitin. You could explain another difference in bringing of this Korban. The Gemara frag, the Gemara asks, we said in the beginning of the Sikha that the Gemara says that the Pshimen learns that it comes from the Tzibur. Why? Because he darshans Chukas Eilam. The Pesach says Chukas Eilam. Mishal Eilam, like Rasha says. So that teaches us that it comes from the Eilam, from the world, which means from the community, from the Tzibur. So the Gemara asks, that the Behuda Chukas Eilam, Chuk Eilam, my, my, what does the, what does the, who he do? What does the Behuda do? Who holds it comes from the Yorshim with the word Chuk Eilam, my Ovidle. What does he do with it? And he what answers, Chukol Elam Te. Buddha learns that the Pasik Chok Elam, Chuk Aselam, teaches us that it's a Chuka forever. What does that mean? It's Taisa Zmaz, but Taisa explains what the Gemara means to say. The Hav, I mean, I would think, Aren Makrev Chavitim Bechol Yem, Ubonda Beshosh and Asim Kedem Gdelam. When the Pasik says you have to bring the Korb Chavitim every day to Ken God, it was only an Aren himself. But the children, the next generations, the Kayanim Gdelam, don't have to bring it every day. So what's the potato telling us? They have to bring it once when they become Kayan Godel. But every Kayan has to bring when he becomes a, a Vader. So the Pshat would be, at Afa every Kayan Godel was already a regular Kayan before. So he already brought his Korban, Minchas Chavitin. Chaposek tells it, but when he becomes a Kayan Godel, let's bring another one. But that doesn't mean he has to bring it for life every day. Hey, that's what the Gemara means. If the Buddha says you have to have a posik, chuko, to tell us, you should bring it every day. So that's what the Buddha learns. Now, the question is, where does Rabbi Shimon know this din? That he uses the word chuk to a different thing, to tell us it comes from Shalalam. Where does he know this din that the Ken God has to bring it every day? Maybe the Ken God has to bring it in addition to the one he brought before when he became a Kayan. He has to bring another one once. Taisa says, and Taisa fear too, but Epshima less than I swear. Epshima doesn't hold of this word, which means, push it. Epshima holds, you don't need a posse for that. It's obvious. It's very obvious that Ken Gordon has to bring it every day. So he, he doesn't need the posse to, but Shank and Abuda loads, we would have had a half a minute that you could you should bring once as Ken Gordon. We need a posse for that. Understand, what's that? Swara the Machlek is Simi Fashtayta Lane. Whether we understand on our own, as that even later generation you have to bring every day, or the Madav or you need a posik, special posik. Reb Shimon says we understand it ourselves, and Reb Huda says not. He does move now. Now this will be explained based on what we said before. The Avedas at Midias in Migdo is a forbidden mitzvah. The fact any korban Tommy that we have, any korban that he brought constantly is always a korban of the tzibur connected to the tzibur. And why is it constant? Because the tzibur is constant. The tzibur is amitzias to me. This from the tzibur, the community is a constant one, an eternal one. With the din as tzibur leimez, as a din that the tzibur doesn't die, as a din. Not to go into the details of what the din is, but the same tzibur we had, according to the Gemara, comes the same tzibur we had a hundred years ago is now not the pshat. Even though the individuals are different, sometimes not even one person from last generation or from one hundred and fifty years ago. It's all one tzibur. The tzibur has the concept of tzibur as a unit because the tzibur, as much as it's made up of individuals, it becomes one unit and it continues. So the avedas that you did in the as a tomid, something as a something constant in the bais has to do with the tzibur. On the river, let us Shimon. Therefore, according to Reb Shimon, as chavite came godels and alteres recording tzibur. We said before Reb Shimon says. That you after he dies, the tzibur brings it because he holds that the king Godel himself brought it as a korban tzibur. 
You wouldn't need a special posik to tell you that you bring it constantly. That that constant that you have to bring it every day is even the data. Why? That's self-understood. The whole re, the whole korban is a korban of the tzibur. Anything of the and the tzibur is tomid. The middle of the korban has to be tomid. But the day it's some korban tomid. Was vet nikib bechol yim. Just like the korban tomid is brought every day, and we why is it brought every day because it's a korban tzibur, and the tzibur is constant. So the korban is constant. So it's self-understood. Since the king godel's korban is a korban tzibur, it has to be constant. You don't need a posse to tell you that all generations you have to bring it every day. That's a Buddha, but according to Buddha, Vibalda does a Korm Yochid. He holds it in the Korm of an individual. The Korm from King Godel Atzim is the Korm of him himself. But by Korm Yochid, you think when it is Lokum and Tomit, Bechol Yem, a Korm Yochid, where do we find the Korm Yochid has to be brought every day? So we would think that the King Godel has to bring the Korm when he becomes a King Godel. But not every day. Arden was an exception, but every, I read later King Godel, they will not. So we need a special posseg. This is an exception of Korm Yochit. It's a chukah that has to be forever. And everything should bring it. So based on this, the episode we could say, So far it says the difference between these two ways in this union is whether we need a special posseg to tell you that it's brought every day. If it's a Korm Tzibur, you don't need a posseg for it because it's obvious. Tzibur means Tomid. If it's not a korban tzibur, korban yochid, you need a posik, but it's more than that. It's also a difference in what kind of tmidi is this. We say this korban is a tomid, how it is. You shleim like this. You can say like this. When you say there is a korban tzibur and there's a chi of tomid, you have to bring a tomid. Is not in an eifn a yeder tog is the noch a noch a nayer chi of. The pshat is not that every day there's a new chi because you could learn like that. But you have a korban tomid every day. So you can learn, and the Denis, you have to bring it every day. So you could say, on one hand, that means there's a tzibur today, and there's a tzibur tomorrow, there's a tzibur the next day. But you could say deeper than that. Not as is the ein chiyuv There's one chiyuv to bring it. And that chiyuv, since it's connected to the tzibur, which is tomid, is nimshech. Azevi, the tzibur atzme is ein metzies, nimshech is vetmidis. The tzibur is one concept, and it's always, that same concept continues. It's not a repeat of that concept. It's the same concept. So the same thing here also. So just like by a Korban Tzibur, any Korban Tzibur is Tomid. Why? And according to this possible Pshad that Rebbe says, that it means that it's one Tzibur that stretches. You could say the same thing by the Kavit Kehen Godel, if it's a Korban Tzibur. If we learn that the Korban Tzibur is a Korban Tzibur, is a Korban Tzibur, like a Korban Tzibur, is the Chiv HaKavrose in an Eifim for Mincha Tomid. So the reason to be makrevit is constantly because it's mincha tom. It means ein chiyuv tmidi. There's one chiyuv, not every day a new chiyuv. One constant chiyuv. But his chalafim beyem shenim shech when his chanach laveda. It starts off when does the chiyuv come? The day he's inaugurated to his doing the aveda. So that's one chiyuv of makrev zayim b'chol yem v'yem. That one chiyuv is now there's a chiyuv today to be makrev from today on every day. Just like the Korban Tomid, it's not a Chiyuv today, and tomorrow is another Chiyuv. From when it started, there's a Chiyuv to be makrif every day, so the Chiyuv is stretched out. If you learn it's Korban Yochid, there's no such thing as it continues. Tzibur doesn't die, the community doesn't die, so it's all, the beginning stretches out. So when you say you have to do it every day constant, it's a different meaning constant. When we say since it's not like a tzibur, it's a yochid. I every day has to bring it. Yes, every day the chiv starts over again. There's a new chiv that starts every day. Even though it's tomid, but it's a different type of tomid. It's not tomid one thing starting from the beginning and it stretches out. But it's a chiv today, and the same chiv starts tomorrow again, and tomorrow again, every day, another chiv to bring the chaviti. This will explain another thing. The Teiras Kenim says something strange. And the posseg where it says, This is the korban of Aaron, the day he was anointed. And then the posseg ends, This is the posseg. So the Teiras Kenim, Says like this, Miyem Shen Nimsha from the day he was anointed, maybe Asira Seifa. He brings 
the tenth of an eifer, which is the korm chavitim, ad elam forever. Then it says, But it says, the day was anointed. I would I mean, maybe it means only the day was anointed. He brings this asira seif. Umaf and he stops. That's what the Pasik finishes off. Mincha tomit. That it's always. It's not just the first day. It's every day. So what is the word What does it mean? You bring it the day you're anointed. It's not the day you're anointed only. You bring it always. So the Terrace came answer. The day you're anointed, that's when you bring the Asira Seifo, and from there you go forever. What does that mean? What is the answer? What's the answer? The word behave the day he brings it, the day is anointed, teaches us that the day is anointed, brings forever. As as for Gishtana Blaze Minchatom, had it said just the word Minchatomid, but when they give us, it's also no Amadav standing, bringing them Korban, Miyem, and there is Gibbon, I can't go to him. We know when they became a Godel, a King, a King Godel, he has to bring it forever. What the Gemara asked if it Minchas Tommy tells them to ask him, if Minchas Tommy tells you you have to bring it forever, what does the words Beyem and Moshe say? The day he was anointed. So he answers that it means that from day he was anointed, he has to bring it forever. And if it wouldn't say that, the Avi would be self understood. Mincha Tomid means forever. But up here now came a zog, and based on what we said, we could say that they came to two tailcoats, Machada Shahidish. As yet they talk at Elam, haste Ayemi Moshe say that every day is the day he was anointed. Der Yemi Moshe Chesay, Atzme is Nimshech. The day he was anointed is Nimshech. Now, this fits only if it's according to Yochid. If it's according to Tibur, and the original day stretches out, so it's not that every day it's as if you're anointed every day. You're anointed once, and that being anointed once stretches out. So every day is a continuation of the day you were anointed, but not that every day you were anointed. So the Teres Kenim is trying to tell us like the other way. If it's according to Yochid, then every day is a new tzivoy, similar to the day you were anointed. So the Yemi Moshe Chese Atzme, the day you were anointed, is Nimshe continues. But let's get as bottom together for Minchatomit that explains that what does the word Minchatomit mean? That's what the Tereskeani means. Aditmidius Bashte, this fact that it's for constantly means is, is this was yet their talk is the chief to bring it in Kor Mincha, we just will give in the Yemi Wash Chesi. Every day you have to bring it as if today you were anointed. Because the other way we learn you're anointed once, and every day is the continuation of that day. But if you learn that it's a Kor Miyochit, so there's no Tmidis, there's not one Hemshech, but every day it's new. What happens that every day continues what? Not the Tchiv, continues the fact that you're anointed. So as if you're anointed today, you're anointed tomorrow. So that's why the Postic has the Yemen said that every day is the Yemen Moshechesi. This, whether every day is considered as if you're anointed today, or it's just a continuation of your original Chiv stretches, is not only in understanding, in Higoyen, in abstract thinking, but it's also... Like that has body in the gather from Minchas Tomi come to is if you explain it like this that Minchas Tomi does mean one Hemshir, but every day it becomes again comes out as the Chavitik and Godel was means Makir bechol yaim that this Korb Chavitik and Godel like you bring every day is a gather from Minchas Chinuf. See the Kayan had the regular Kayan brought it once that's called Minchas Chinuf since they were Machanechim they inaugurated him to his Avede he bring the Korb the first day the Kayan Godel brings. His extra, this minchas chavitim, because it's the day he's inaugurated. But normally you would think by the next day, is not a day he's inaugurated. It's not a minchas chinuch, it's just a hemshech to before. But if you learn that every day is a new thing, and every day is b'yei is inaugurated, that means every day it's called a minchas chinuch. Every day we look at it, today you are nishanuch to the and that makes a difference in Aloha. The male of Okim Lehman, you could say, A Pumphia can godl, Torla Hatil, and the Tonkin Avey, the Visa brings a Minchas Finuch, can godl on the first day that he becomes a can godl. And he has to start off his Avey with this Korb, Minchas. And that's a Minchas Finuch. And therefore, the Deen is that he cannot do anything now that he's a can godl till he brings this Korb. As Zay says, Behold, every day would be the same as a Torni Ton, a Kapodim Hatil, at least the Hatil, you can do Kain Avey. No, Aveda, either bring the Chavitim before he brings the Chavitim. Because every day he is Nishan, because every day is becomes a new King Godel. And he has to bring this Korban, and he can't do anything without it. I'm saying that if you learn the Korban Tzibur, he was Nishan, the Korban Minchas Chinuch was the first day. 
And every day is just a continuation of that. That one gets stretched out. That chiv is one chiv for Yemen Wash. And now it's not Yemen Wash. But it, according to this, it comes out that this is the day that he was in Schanach and made the Allah if possible that he cannot bring any korm every day before he brings this korm. And the fact is that they brought after the korm tom and they brought it right away. But it seems like that there should be an iser to bring because this is the minchas chinuch. The beer and all them gathered from Minchas Tomit like there as Bora the Sakor Miyochet. The way we explained before, according to the explanation, that's Sakor Miyochet. The male Minchas Tomit means that every day is a new din. Every day is a new Mincha. Every day is something new. You like to do Neschanich every day, as we said. At the Yemi Moshe Chayserin Yenim should the day that you are anointed is continued. As they as bechol Yem v'Yem v'Etanai Yachiv and Avos Kor Mechinah. Every day becomes a new obligation. Of bringing a korm chinuch, which means today you're being inaugurated, is a chmasim eaten beer in Lukutatere, fits to what it says in Lukutatere, which is called the chsidish aparsha. The Rebbe would call Lukutatere every week. This is the chsidish aparsha of the week. From Heintike Woch, from the Parsha Tzav. A frag dirt in the Fulosh, not Kosso Bim and Moshe Chesed, Alter Rebbe. As this question, when the Postic says you bring this korm to King God, will bring Bim and Moshe Chesed, a frag dirt, Alter Rebbe asks, the Chura, have a lame me, Yem and Moshe Chesed. From the day you were anointed. It says, it means you have to bring it every day, your whole life. Sure, should have said, from the day that you were anointed, you continue. Why does it say the day you were anointed? And he answers, in order that from then, every day, forever, in order that from then, every day, forever, should be gilas, pechinas, madregas, yim, should be the revelation of that madregi of the day you were anointed. The day you were anointed is something special. Explains it that when the day you were anointed, there's special Gilliam that come down. Later on, not. But we strength it. So the Rebbe says, the Pesach is telling me, that every day, forever, for all the years, has the same Gilui, all these special Gilliam, as the day you were in Nimshech. And he says, that this is what it says, that's why the says, that forever that Gilu comes down. Even though it's Adelam, forever, still it's called Be'em Mashchis, because forever it's all the same thing as Be'em Mashchis. And this fits if we learn that it's a Korb Yochit. The Mele, it's not that the first day is just stretched out, but every day is a new thing similar to the beginning. Fits what the Alter Rebbe says. That's in Ruchnius also. That what happened, the Giluim that came down on the day he was anointed. Happens every day. This fits to what we said in Nigla. Every day you have the day that he's a Moshe. Every day he is anointed, as if he was anointed that day with all. So in Nigla, we negated to the halacha we said before that that's the first korban you have to bring, and you can't bring anything before. And Al Pirsid, it means that the gilui of the day you were anointed comes down forever. Whenever you bring the korban, you get that gilui.